2023 is here. What is going on today, guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Jay. New year, new gear. I am so excited for today's video. I didn't even get dressed yet. This just arrived at my front door a few minutes ago, and we're gonna unbox it together right now. This is a brand that I love and know very well. This is a brand that you love and know very well. I have never played this model before, so I'm super excited to check it out with you guys. Without further ado, let's go. Before we get into the review, just really quickly want to give a huge shout out and a thank you to the fine folks over at Zounds.com who were so gracious as to loan me this guitar so I could review it for you guys today. Um, check out Zounds, I've got a link in the description down below, awesome website, they've got a ton of inventory, tons of guitars and other gear in stock, and they have this model there as well. So what are we looking at today? Well this is a Charvel Pro Mod SC1 or a SoCal style one. Uh, this particular one comes in the HSH pickup configuration and it includes a Floyd Rose 1000 double locking tremolo system, um, maple neck, alder body. This clocks in at exactly eight pounds, which is a perfect weight in my opinion for guitar. It's solid without being feeling like the boat anchor hanging on your shoulder. Um, it's a great guitar. So, you know, in my opinion, this is the perfect confluence of vintage guitar meets new modern super strat appointments right basically you know charvel is owned by fender if you don't know so obviously this is a typical stratocaster however it's got a lot of modern features on it like the double locking tremolo system uh, like the seymour duncan distortion pickups which are really high output in fact these are some of their highest output passive pickups that seymour makes in their product lineup today <laughs> pickup clocks in at like 16.6 on that range and uh, really high output. I actually found it kind of difficult to get a really cl crystal clear sound from any of my clean patches on any of my amp sims that I use uh, without having to dial back the gain or just lower the simply lower the volume on the guitar because it would still break up. So you know put that into consideration if you're looking at this guitar. You may want to swap out the pickups or you may not even want this guitar if you don't need that kind of high output. It's gorgeous. This comes in, uh, this particular color is Cherry Kiss Burst. This uh, particular model also comes in Platinum Pink and Slime Green. The pink is gorgeous as well. I mean, really beautiful color. But this Burst is just unbelievably 
beautiful. And look at the back of it too. I, I wish the whole guitar was actually just this color right here because I love reds, those are my favorite. And if you look closely, you can still see the grain through it as well. If I can get that in focus. Yeah, so this guitar is really great. I love Charvel's necks. This is the same as the necks on my other guitars. It's the uh, compound radius of 12 to 16 inches. So it's a little bit more curved back here for doing your chord work, first position stuff, and gets a little flatter as you go up the neck for more of the shredder stuff, which I guess, you know, supposedly is a little bit easier on the flatter end of the spectrum. Now, you know, in the past, I've kind of called this like a modern C with a little bit of a flat spot, but this really feels more like a D. If I want to call it anything, I would almost call it like a modern D-shaped neck. It's thin, but it's not you know, Ibanez wizard neck thin. It's not that thin where it's like super annoying, but it's definitely thinner than a lot of other guitars. If you're somebody who plays older Gibsons, for instance, you're probably gonna not, not like the feel of this neck as much because it's just a lot thinner than those. Charvel is well known for doing their rolled fingerboard edges, and this one does not disappoint. Not only do you not feel any fret spread at all, no sharp edges whatsoever, this has been, the, the frets on this have been taken care of and filed very well, but the rolled edges, it's just, you don't know you, you need it till you feel it. So for instance, if you compare this to like an Ibanez RG, those necks, the fingerboard edge is so sharp that after playing it for a little while, it's actually fatiguing on your hands because it's just, it's painful after a while. You're not, it's not the sharpness of the frets, it's the actual edge of the wood is just so sharp that pressing on it for a while, just hurts. Whereas this is so comfortable, you can play this thing for hours. This is literally one of my favorite neck shapes ever of any manufacturer so far that I've checked out. And I've got quite a few guitars here. So definitely check that out. These are jumbo frets as well. Um, they're perfect in my opinion. The height and the width of the fret makes a big difference. If you don't know, you know, check out a lot of other guitars when you go to your local guitar shop and just look at the frets and see the way they feel. Some frets are very tall you know, with the, with the very drastic uh, shoulders to them, and then some are more rounded out. And the jumbos and the medium jumbo frets are just kind of like the perfect mixture of both things. So they're up there enough so you really, you know they're there, but they're just comfortable to slide over and uh, they just feel great. <laughs> SRP for this is $1099, so essentially $1,100 US. Not a bad price, but for that amount of money, I would expect to have stainless steel frets. Unfortunately, this one does not. Um, you know, in this day and age, 2023, I, this is just an aside. I want to say that all manufacturers of guitars should be using stainless steel frets. That shouldn't be a premium option. That should just be what's included in every guitar nowadays. There is no reason to continue to use nickel silver. I don't know what the difference in price is between the different, you know, the different metals. I'm sure it's not that much. And if they charge 10% more than whatever it costs, fine. I'm willing to pay it. So for $1,100, I really would expect this guitar to have stainless steel frets. It's kind of unfortunate that it doesn't. These feel great, but then over time, they'll have to be filed down and eventually replaced. And it's just a nuisance and I don't see the point of it. These frets feel great. It's a great guitar. It's solid, well-built. Now, some other features I wanna talk about too are the no-load tone pot which seems to be a standard feature in all the Charvel guitars as well. If you open it up all the way to the 10 position, it's completely taken out of the circuit. There's no tone um, bleed through at all, uh, which is great. You know, I think that's wonderful. It also has the EVH Bourne's low friction volume pot. Now it spins so easily that you can just touch it. You can just bump it and you're actually gonna move it. So in my opinion, that's not a necessary feature. I don't really know why they include that. Um, it's so non-friction, it's just, it's crazy. I don't know, I don't get it. You kind of want your volume knob to stay where you set it, you know, for your song or your session, you know, your session. Uh, so I don't know what the point of that is. Other than, you know, it makes it easier if you're doing like that Ingve violin technique where he's doing this in between every note, which how many people are actually doing that? So what is the point of the, no, the, uh, the low friction 
uh, pots. Don't really get it. Five-way selector switch. Uh, it switches really well, nice and tight. You know, you know when you're in each position. I like that. And I was interested to find out by looking on Charvel's website that there is no position where just the middle pickup is on by itself. In any position, it's include you know it includes one of the other um, humbuckers in you know in parallel or series. But you get some good tones out of it. You know, you get a you get a nice variety of tones from this guitar. And I don't know what more to say. Um, it's a beautiful instrument. It plays well. It feels great. It's super comfortable. You know, if you're looking for this type of guitar, you're looking for a Stratocaster, but you want some modern appointments on it. You want some uh, better tuning stability, uh, better playability. I don't know, whatever you want to call it. This is going to get you there. And this is definitely for the hard rocker um, with these with these pickups. Now, if I were to keep this guitar one of the things I would replace immediately would be the Floyd Rose Bridge, this particular model, the 1000 series. Uh, in my opinion, you know, the back of the back piece of the bridge here with the fine tuners, if I can get that in focus, just gets in the way. You know, when you're picking and stuff, I just feel like your hand wants to hit that all the time. And it's just very obtrusive. And I don't know why they're still making this, this series bridge. Uh, in this day and age they have there's a floyd rose pro series which you can get online for i don't know 250 to 300 dollars which is much more lower profile on the back piece there and it, the fine tuners are kind of on an angle so that just makes more sense it's just lower not in your way so much also i don't really care so much for this type of arm where it just has that ring around it that you just have to tighten up all the time because after you use it for a little while the ring just kind of works itself loose and you have to kind of retighten it and uh, that can be annoying if you're somebody who uses the whammy bar a lot, which, you know, sometimes I do. But what else can I say about Charvel? They continue to not disappoint. I really love Charvels. They're some of my favorite guitars out there right, right now. You know, let me know your thoughts on this one. You know, would you keep this guitar? Would you buy this guitar? Do you already own this guitar? Do you have it in a different color? Now, it also comes in different pickup configurations, too. So, obviously, this is the HSH. Uh, they make one in HSS. There's a couple signature models that come with like one of them just has a single humbucker in the bridge. And then I think there's an HS configuration. I would probably prefer to get this guitar in just the HH configuration. Now, if I was gonna keep this particular guitar, because I like this color, I like the feel of it and everything else, I would probably just swap out the pick guard that eliminates that whole, get, yank, the, yank the middle pickup out and it's just, you know, just gonna be uh, empty cavity under there. No big deal, just keep the two humbuckers. So I would replace the pick guard, take that pickup out. I would replace the Floyd Rose with one of their higher end uh, models. And that'd be it, this thing would be good to go. Do I wanna spend another three, $400, you know, doing that? Not really. You kinda want it out of the box at $1,100, you want it to be kinda how it's gonna stay, right? So again, factor that in. If those things don't really matter to you, not a big deal. Oh, one more thing too, obviously I would have to change that volume pot for something that's just a standard amount of friction, which I prefer. Again, these are just personal preferences. Maybe you like that, maybe you don't. Anyways, that's it for today, guys. Thanks again to the guys, to the good folks at Zounds for hooking me up with this one. Uh, quick housekeeping too. If you have not already subscribed to the channel, please do so. Hit the like button, the notification bell as well, so you can be notified when I drop a new video, which isn't that often. I'm not an everyday kind of guy, so you don't have to feel like you're gonna get inundated with videos if you do subscribe to the channel. That's all I've got for you guys for today. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll talk to you again soon. I'm out of here. See ya!